Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. In this video, we're going to learn how we can limit how much a Sin Machine camera can see by adding the Confiner module. This lets us very easily make a shape with our view area to make sure that our camera never goes outside of it. This works for any game, like a top-down game, or a platformer, or a management game. By the way, I also cover this in my complete Builder Defender course. In there, I use Sin Machine to move the camera, and then I implement this in order to make sure that the camera is always inside the world. Check the link in the description if you want to see this being used in a complete game as part of a step-by-step -step course. So over here I have my simple demo scene. It's a simple top-down game and I have my simple character. So I can move left, right, up, down. And if I go towards the edges, yep, there you go, there's the issue. I already have some invisible walls to stop the player from leaving the play area, but the camera is still unconstricted so it can see that. We should not be able to see the void outside of the play area. So let's solve this issue. So over here is my scene view and I've got my main camera, which as you can see is using a scene machine brain. So it's being controlled by this virtual camera right in here. Now I cover the basics for scene machine in another video, so go check that out if you're not familiar with this tool. It essentially simplifies everything to do with cameras. So I've got my virtual camera and over here it's using this basic setup. All it's really doing is just set up to follow my simple character. So that's it, nothing special. And then down here we see a whole bunch of extensions and we can click to add some of them. And in this case, let's add a Sin Machine Confiner. So like the name implies, this will confine the camera to a certain bounding shape. Now here, as you can see, it requires a bounding shape. And the way that we define that is by making an empty game object. And then in here, let's add a Polygon Collider 2D. So as soon as you do, it see that it creates this object. So right away, we've got this shape. And all we need to do is really just set the points where we want them. We can click over here in order to edit the collider. And as soon as we do, now we can easily modify these. So start dragging them out just like that. And of course, this is the default shape, which might have too many points. So in this case, we really just want a rectangle. So we don't need one of these points. And one way to destroy these points is to hold down control and then click anywhere on the line. So I want to destroy this point. So let's click on this line. There you go, it's gone. And if you want to add more of them, then you really just click on anywhere. Okay, so just drag these out to the play area. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Okay, so here I have my bounding box. This is a physics object. So let's just go up here on the polygon collider and make sure we tick is trigger to make sure that this is not a solid object. And now depending on how you set up the rest of your game, you might be thinking one thing, which is won't this actually break everything that has to do with physics? And the answer is yes. If we leave it like this, then it won't break pretty much any raycast that you try to do. So you can solve that by going up here on the layer and you can use the default ignore raycast layer. So if you do that, then it will no longer block any physics tests. And if you're curious, then another approach you can do is go into edit and over here, go into the project settings and you can go into the physics and down here you see the layer collision matrix. So you could, for example, put this on a different layer and then make sure that it doesn't interact with some different other layer. So our bonding box is set up. Now let's simply select our main camera and then go down here and we just drag our reference. Let's just rename this to the Sin Machine Confiner Bounce. And yep, down there on the virtual camera, we have it. Now Sin Machine works both in 2D and 3D. So naturally, if you had a 3D camera in a 3D game, then instead of a polygon collider 2D, you would use one of the other ones. So for example, a box collider and in here select Confine 3D. Then you got an interesting toggle, which is should it confine the screen edges or not? If you do take this, then it won't take into account the actual size of the camera. And if you don't, then it will only take account the center of the camera. So in this case, we do not want to see the void outside of our play area, so let's leave it ticked. And then for damping, just if you want to slow it down, but in this case, we do not want to see the void, so let's put damping on zero. Okay, so here we are, and I move around, and if I go towards the edge, yep, there you go. I've got the physics letters, so the character cannot leave the play area. And now the camera no longer leaves the play area either. So I can go anywhere I want and I no longer see the empty void. And here we can experiment with zooming in and out. So if I go towards the corner and if I start zooming out, yep, there you go. I cannot see the void right there on the right. It zooms out, but it pushes the camera to the left. Whereas if you disable the confined screen edges, then now it only takes into account the very center of the camera. So with this, it looks perfect and everything works exactly as intended. All right, so there it is, super easy to add. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.